pregame.com. A little something different for you here at pregame.tv. We haven't done that, done this too much this year. I know, VR, uh, you've been writing for a while now in Gaming Today and a couple of other places and at pregame uh, talking about UFC and the big cards each week. But here's UFC on Fox on Saturday night. Your video best bet this week, yep. I like it that much, is the fight between Pettis and Cerrone. And we're going to get your best bet in just a bit. Pettis right now about a dollar twenty favorite. Hasn't been a lot of movement that I've seen since really the fight was set. It's always been right around $1.15. Yeah to a dollar yeah. 25 in that neighborhood but break down this fight now I'm not the biggest I'm just going to come out and say it I'm not the biggest UFC guy I listen to him VR and I listen to one other guy when I want to get information on the UFC and I'll play his plays but I when I jump into this game and and kind of a beginning handicap of the UFC. I see that Cerrone's from the Muay Thai kickboxing yeah. background. I see that Pettis, well, we all know what he did with that crazy Showtime kick when he came off Amazing. the cage. Everybody knows about that. But what I do see with these two guys when I study it is that both of them want to stand up and fight, which makes me think that this might be a short fight. I mean, both guys will go to the ground, but they also want to stand up and fight and go at it. 100%. And I think if anyone's going to take it to the ground, I think it's going to be Pettis. He's just... Uh, I think if it went there, I think he'd be a little more dominant, and his, his takedown accuracy is, is just off the charts. If he wants to take you down, he's going to take you down. But I agree with you. I think this is going to be a stand-up fight. Both these guys like to strike. When I looked at this matchup, it's one of these situations where, unfortunately for Pettis, he shouldn't even find himself in this fight. Here's a kid who beat Ben Henderson, who is the champ right now mm -hmm. in this weight class at WEC, had the title, came over to the UFC when the WEC pretty much was closed down, and instead of waiting for a title shot, I think this is what separates the UFC from boxing. And this would never happen in boxing. This kid, instead of sitting there and waiting for a guaranteed title shot, all he had to do was wait because of the injury, instead he said, I wanna fight. And he fights Clay Guida and he loses. Mm -hmm. And then instead of getting a title shot, he's got to work his way back up. And I think in boxing, that would never happen. A promoter would not allow that to happen. No, not at all. After the, that Showtime kick that you touched mm -hmm. on, and his stock is so high, right. you're not going to risk him. You want to put him right there in the main event. And I think that set his career a little back. And I also think that's why this price is only $1.20. Uh, because he lost that fight. He's won two since, mm -hmm. but it's kind of that shines wore off. Where with Cerrone, even though he lost to Diaz, um, he's got a huge following. And he's one of those guys that's just liked for some mm -hmm. reason. He's always been liked. And I think it has to do with his Muay Thai style. So public money would be on Cerrone. Exactly. Keep it at least low if you like Pettis. It's going to keep it down a little bit. I, I agree 100%. And I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be one of those standing fights and Pettis if he wins this fight I think that's when he's, it's going to catapult him where he was then. Let me ask you this much. If Melendez and Henderson do fight, which would be a title fight obviously. For sure. If Pettis wins this, it's likely he's going to have to sit around and wait. Yep. No matter who wins this fight. If he sits around and has to wait to see if there's going to be a Melendez-Henderson fight, does he take another fight, or does that when the old boxy comes no, in and they say, no, okay, he's got to sit no, and wait? There's nothing no, like, I, okay. I, I, that's what I love about the UFC, that right. you want to fight, we're going to let you fight. Right. Uh, that's what I love about how Dana White runs his sport. Uh -huh. I'm not going to protect my fighters just because they have a big name. You know, he, he doesn't protect the fighters. He mm -hmm. wants to give the fans the fight the fans want to see. Right. And if that means putting your top guy, your, your big moneymaker, at risk, mm -hmm. then that's what he's going to do. And with Pettis, I think since he's already done that, I don't think anyone's going to sit and wait. I think yeah. he's, he has the luxury mm -hmm. of sitting and waiting because of that. At the end of the day, here's how I think the fight's going to break down. You got Cerrone, who's going to be the busier fighter. He's going to land more. But I think Pettis has the heavier hands and will land the more significant strikes. And it's, it's one of those fights where if it does go to the judges' scorecard, it's what, stop, what do you prefer. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. 
These guys like it to end fights early, so this one may not even get there. A couple of other fights on the card that we wanted to talk about, because before we shot the video tonight, you said not only do you have a best bet, which we're going to get to in a bit on this particular fight, but you're looking at the Rampage Jackson, yep. Robert Teixeira fight. You're looking at Demetrius Johnson Main against event. John Dodson, those two fights, which are going to be after, I believe, this uh, Soroni Pettis fight. But you were talking about a little parlay action. Yep. Why don't you tell us about that? I'm going to tell you. And I, I think that's one of the, the things I really like to do with the UFC is I, I – like to parlay it mm -hmm. um, because sometimes there's favorites that you know should be even higher favorite. Meaning, right. I know that the casual better doesn't get this concept as easily as a professional better does. But personally, myself, mm -hmm. if I have to lay minus 400 to win 100, and I know the true odds should be closer to minus 800. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that bet every time. There's value. Absolutely. Eyes closed. I'm. I do that, do by it. the way, just off the. I do that with baseball. I mean, you know, most of my plays sure. are, that are favorites are usually around a dollar thirty-ish. Right. But if I see a game that's a dollar sixty-five, dollar seventy, that I think should be minus two ten, minus two twenty, you're going to bet. You it. got value. Exactly. But you tell a casual better, go up there and bet a thousand, and only win two fifty. They're going to tell right. you you're crazy. Right. And uh, when you look at, at the UFC, because you could parlay. I think you add some value there, and I'm looking at Glover to share against Quentin Jackson. Granted, he's minus 300. I think the true odds should be minus closer to minus 500. But it's one of those situations where I don't think a straight bet's warranted because both these guys have heavy hands. Mm -hmm. And as good as Teixeira is, and, and I give Rampage Jackson credit for taking this fight because no one's wanted to fight Teixeira, at the end of the day, I think the way Teixeira fights, which is I'll stand there and trade with anyone, kind of benefits Jackson a little. Um, you look at him as the older fighter, but he's only a year older than Teixeira. But he's been in so many wars. He's 32 and 10. He's fought 42 fights, and his fights have averaged going six minutes longer than Teixeira's fights so far. He doesn't That's want to a lot either, of punishment. He? No. Yeah. I, it's contractual obligation type things. It's money type things. So I really think um, this just sets up nicely for Teixeira. This is a guy who lands 8.4 strikes per minute. That's unheard of. And land 73% of those. That, to me, is just ridiculous. I think this fight doesn't get to a decision. I think to Sarah ends it. I was going to ask you real quick. I really do. He's not, he, he's kind of new to this level of fighting, talking yeah, about Teixeira. Yeah, hasn't been tested at this level. Is it that, is that what's keeping the line right around 320, minus 320, or is it Jackson's popularity and Teixeira is still kind of an unknown? Exactly. It's, Teixeira so far has been hype. And because he's a little older fighter, you know, he's 19 and 2, mm -hmm. uh, but this is only his, his more or less third fight in the UFC. And when it comes to the UFC, the fans are a lot, very, very knowledgeable. They'd be following, they've been following these guys for years from when they were in other promotions. So they know these fighters. And they know when you get to the big level, when you get to the big stage, which is the UFC, mm -hmm. you got to earn that respect. They don't care how much hype you come in with. Mm -hmm. You have to show them what you got. And I think that's what this line, why it's only 300, 320, and I think it should be a lot higher. Couple that with the fact that Quentin Jackson's given the fans so many great fights. Mm -hmm. They have such an appreciation and a love for this guy that they're going to back him. They don't want to see Rampage Jackson lose. Sure. They want to see him howl. They want to so see him walk They just want to go out there and chain. cheer for him. That's exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's what's holding this line where it is. All right, let's talk about the Mighty Mouse and the Magician, the flyweight title fight. And I'm going to tell you right fight. now, again, I'm not an expert at UFC, but I do know that if you blink an eye, you might miss 15 you punches of this one. Something. Tons of speed by both guys. I I'll tell you, this is one of the funnest divisions to watch because these guys are not afraid to throw punches. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're just so athletically gifted. The only thing they don't have is size. Here's the thing. Uh, I think a lot of money is going to come in on Dodson because he is coming in with so and much he's like 212, 215, right around there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but at, at the end of the day, I just think he hasn't been as tested as Demetrius Johnson is. When you look at Johnson's resume, he's gone in against Cruz. Sure, he lost to him. But he beat Benavidez. He be beat Torres. And not saying Dodson hasn't been under the primetime light because he did win tough, but this is just another level. You're on Fox, right. national TV on a main event. I just think I give the edge to Demetrius Johnson. And here's another situation where one of them is the busier striker, and that's going to be Dodson. Mm -hmm. But I think Demetrius Johnson is the more accurate striker and has the heavier hands. Okay. And the only question that remains is, 
is this going to stay standing the whole time? Because as good as Demetrius Johnson is, has taken a fight to the mat, no one's been able to keep Dotson down. He has, he's, if you look at his uh, defense against um, takedowns, 100%. No one's been able to take him down yet to the mat. And I want to see this fight to see if Demetrius Johnson, who is the, the champ, mm -hmm. is able to do that. But I think even if it stays standing, he's the heavier handed guy, the more accurate guy. I think getting it even at minus 200, not enough for me to lay a straight bet, mm -hmm. but enough for me to add him to the parlay with uh, another favor of Teixeira, and then of course the. Well, main I was going to say, uh, yeah, let's. We got two thirds of the parlay: Teixeira, we got Dodson. So let's get to the best bet. We'll find out who you like in the best bet by itself, Absolutely. and then who you're adding to that and to make that three team tie parlay. Tie it together. Sounds good. Anthony Pettis, Donald Cerrone. This is going to be a great fight at 155. I got to go with the slight favorite here, Anthony Pettis. I think the line's a little bit too short. Based on the fact Cerrone's got a real strong and loyal following. And remember, Pettis lost a lot of steam when he took that fight against Guida and lost it. If this fight would have took place back before that loss, I think we'd be looking at a line of closer to minus 160, 170. And I still think Pettis is probably more improved of a fighter than he was then having all this extra time. So for me, I'm going to look for Pettis. I'm going to lay the 120 again. This is a this is the chalk. You're going to have to drink some water when you make this because <laughs> it's a lot of chalk. Uh -huh. But sometimes it's the right side. And remember, this is a, a, a Fox card. Mm -hmm. This isn't your normal card. And the UFC is, is going to showcase their stars. And when you look at this card, here's who the stars are in these three fights. It's Anthony Showtime Pettis. It's Glover Teixeira, who's got so much hype behind him. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's Demetrius Johnson. And here's a night that the UFC wants their stars to shine. I really believe that. There's some times where I look and I see there's so much value on dogs, but there's other times, just like I follow boxing, mm -hmm. and I know this is the night of the favorites. They're sure. here because top rank or golden boy or whoever may be promoting it wants their stars to shine. Right. Granted, they have to go out there and get it done, but they're usually matched up in oh, yeah. a way where it benefits them. I'll never forget, just real quickly, and it was back, we're talking in the mid to late 90s, maybe even earlier, and uh, I used to do the Stardust Line radio show. We used to have Iran Barkley. We used to have the, all the boxers come down and, and do the show in the sports books with us. And it was a fun time. It was 10 to midnight. It was sure. Saturday nights in the sports book. All the different boxers coming down there. Times. And one of the boxers I kind of got close to by doing some interviews with was Alex Garcia. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, yeah, Big heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was one fight away. He was just fighting a journeyman on outside in the back parking lot at the Riviera Hotel, USA wow. Boxing on a Tuesday night. And I'm sitting there doing some local radio stuff with a guy by the name of Seed Williams here in town. And Garcia's fighting a guy who's got a posted record of like 14 and 14. So, you know, he's basically never won a fight. Fighting this journey, but it reminds me of what you said. They want this guy to win. Well, they wanted Garcia to win that fight. He gets knocked out by, he gets caught. Gets knocked out by a journeyman in the second round. Blows about a $10 million Whoa. gig down the road. That's so the fight That's game, the man. cool thing about the fight game of the yeah. UFC. He's the expert when it comes to UFC. You definitely want to check out his stuff at pregame.com. Each and every fight card. I know who I'm betting because of Vegas Runner. When we come back, more VR. We're going to talk Maryland Duke Saturday college basketball. Stick around for that and more right here at pregame.tv.